oh my gosh, there's so many options for automation of web browsers. Which one should I use? There's so many choices. Ah, no worries. I got you covered. And there are a ton of automated test tools available, but in this video, I'm just going to focus on the top three you need to know about that are open source and that focus almost exclusively on web-based browser automation. So let's start with the granddaddy of them all, and that is Selenium. So Selenium is a groundbreaking automation testing library that really transformed the tech world. It was conceived by the brilliant mind of Jason Huggins during his tenure at ThoughtWorks in 2004. And Selenium's innovative approach to automated testing took the industry by storm. There were tools out there that already did browser-based automation, like WinRunner, which I loved. But this is one of the first instances of an open source solution that actually drove a web browser. And the way Selenium was originally created, it started to really cause a lot of bugs because of the JavaScript sandbox was acting as a potential roadblock to the project's future. So, so in 2007, Simon Stewart stepped in and embarked on a mission to develop the next generation Selenium, which is now Selenium WebDriver. And this cutting edge evolution of Selenium really helped breathe new life into the platform, ensuring its continued success as a staple in the world of software testing. And so to be clear, Selenium is designed just for automating web browsers. And because it's been around for so long, it has forced a large ecosystem of open source projects that use Selenium WebDriver as a key component to the functionality. And Selenium can be extended in various ways. There are numerous drivers, bindings, plugins, and frameworks created and maintained by third parties that enhance its capabilities. So what are some of the pros of using Selenium for browser-based automation? Well, the first is it has a ton of language support. So if you're into Java, c -sharp, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, I think they even have PHP versions. They have pretty much a language binding for any language you're interested in. This really makes it a virtual choice for testers who have a diverse coding skill set. So if for some reason you're really hung up on using Ruby or you want to use PHP and you want to automate a web browser, Selenium might be the right choice for you and your team. Also, it supports all the major browsers, so includes Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, and Opera, and it's a W3 standard. So if you care about standards, then Selenium might be the right choice for you. And it also has a large community. Selenium has been around for a long time, has one of the largest communities of users. And this means there are plenty of resources, tutorials, and solutions available for common problems. They also have a very active Slack channel where you can actually talk to a lot of the contributors there to get advice or solutions for issues you may encounter. All right, some cons. Now, this might be controversial. I'm not talking bad about any of these solutions, but some of the cons that people have reported, number one is slow execution. So Selenium tests can be slower compared to newer tools like Cypress and Playwright. There are a lot of things you could do to overcome this, but that is one of the cons. And the second thing is flaky tests where I think it, the way people design Selenium can make them flaky. Not that Selenium is inherently flaky. It's just that Selenium tests can sometimes be developed and poorly, which makes them flaky and inconsistent, leading to false positives or negative results. And also, a lot of users have reported complex setup. I know they released a new version of uh, Selenium Manager, I think, that automatically installs it for you. But if you're starting from scratch, setting up Selenium can be complex, especially when it comes to configuring WebDriver for different browsers. But keep in mind, many automated testing solutions actually use Selenium under the covers. So Selenium is just an API. So it's designed to automate browsers as an API, and you need to develop all the scaffolding to help support all the functionality that you need from a normal framework. But a lot of solutions out there actually have what they call batteries included approach. So many of the cons we talked about are easily overcome using some of these open source frameworks like Selenium Base, Selenide, Nightwatch, WebDriver IO, Serenity, to name just a few. So using these frameworks will save you a lot of time and effort since they act almost like a wrapper on top of Selenium. It includes a lot or a ton of ready-made features that you don't have to design or develop for yourself. So before you go down the path of creating your own framework, make sure to check out existing Selenium-based frameworks first. The second top automation tool for web browsers, once again, this is not in any particular order. Number two is Cypress. So Cypress IO is a developer-friendly or developer-focused testing tool that really was designed to help developers write tests for the web. 
And based on a podcast interview I did with one of the co-founders or co-creators of Cypress back in 2017, I learned that the Cypress project started around 2015 by Brian Mann, a developer who had been working in the field for 10 years and had ran over 10,000 tests. He then realized that the existing tools for automating testing were, to him, unreliable and too slow to use for test-driven development. So he began experimenting with new technologies being introduced into browsers like WebSockets with the goal of creating an underlying architecture that was less flaky and more powerful and ran faster. So that's where Cypress was born. It was developed with a focus on three main things, setting up the tool in under 60 seconds, creating a writing experience that is fast and reliable with a heavy focus on debugging abilities, and, and the third was the ability to help in the maintenance cycle. And Cypress uses a completely different approach to testing than Selenium WebDriver. While Selenium WebDriver runs remotely outside of a browser and executes remote commands into the browser, Cypress runs inside the browser. So when tests are run, Cypress first boots the Cypress web application, then pulls in the user's application. And this really enables Cypress to synchronize, get notification of every single thing that happens inside the browser, providing native access to every single DOM element and every aspect of the application itself. And this enables Cypress to make automation a lot more precise. So Cypress really kind of straddles both worlds and runs inside the browser to do cool things, but also expands beyond the sandbox of JavaScript and beyond the limitations of JavaScript itself. Cypress uses many of the same underlying automation APIs that the browser exposes, but bypasses WebDriver and talks directly to the browser the same way that each driver does for each browser vendor. So Cypress comes fully baked and fully packed as a desktop application using Electron and Node. Also, it's good to note that Cypress is not a general automation tool, but has a laser focus on testing, and it's ideal as developers build their applications. So some pros or advantage of using Cypress are is Cypress is a JavaScript-based end-to-end testing framework designed to simplify the process of testing modern and web applications. And so it allows developers to create tests, debug them visually, and automatically run them in continuous integration builds. Cypress was designed with a focus on front-end developers. So that's a pro if you're a developer. If you're a tester, may not be. It also offers automatic weights for elements, which can be very useful in end-to-end -end testing where elements may not be immediately available. So this helps bring down flakiness because it handles all that for you behind the scenes. Cypress also provides detailed error messages pointing to the exact line of code causing the issue, and it automatically records a video of the test run and makes a screenshot of the moment the test fails. Once again, this is all done out of the box. No extra coding needed to get this functionality. And it has a concise syntax and is easy to style with, making it a great choice for developers who are new to end-to-end -to -end testing. So if you're a front-end developer, if you're a developer, Cypress may be a better option for you than Selenium because it just kind of fits into your ecosystem a lot better. So some cons. Handling iframes in Cypress requires a plugin, which can be a disadvantage for developers who prefer a tool that can handle all aspects of end-to-end -end testing out of the box, has limited browser support, and also you're stuck using JavaScript. And you kind of, it's very, very opinionated tool. So that's another thing. You have to use or create Cypress tests the way Cypress wants you to. It's, it's, it keeps you pretty much, pretty much in their box the way they want you to do. Very opinionated. So if you're into freedom and being willy-nilly and doing things a ton of different ways, uh, this may not be the solution for you. Cypress also has an extensive library of plugins that extend its capabilities. So some of the favorite that folks have shared with me on my podcasts and webinars, and I'll have a link to these down below. One is the Cypress Axe that helps you test your application for accessibility issues using Axe Core and Cypress Audit that allows you to run Google Lighthouse audits directly from your end-to-end -end test suites. This is just two of many plugins that are available for Cypress. So the third top automation test tool for browser automation is Playwright. So Playwright is the newest solution out of the two we've already talked about. And it's a cross-browser automation library for end-to-end -end testing. Playwright actually started off as a fork of Puppeteer in 2019. So Playwright is a tool designed for end-to-end -end testing of modern web applications. It supports all the modern rendering engines like Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. It can be used across different platforms. And Playwright also supports multiple programming languages, including TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, .NET, and Java. One critical feature of Playwright is its ability to emulate native mobile browsers like Google Chrome for Android and mobile Safari. 
And it also provides robust features to prevent flaky tests such as auto wait functionality, web first assertions, and tracing capabilities. And Playwright operates out of process, aligning with modern browser architecture and freeing it from the typical limitations of in process test runners like you might see with Cypress. So it, so it supports testing scenarios that could span multiple tabs, origins, and users, and can interact with dynamic controls and produce trusted events. And to ensure complete isolation and fast execution, Playwright creates a new browser context for each test equivalent to a new browser profile. So this allows for full test isolation with minimal overhead. It also provides powerful tooling, including code generation by recording actions, an inspector for page inspection and selector generation, and a trace viewer for capturing all the information necessary to investigate test failures. So some pros of Playwright are, Playwright supports a variety of selectors, including text selectors, CSS selectors, XPath, and special selectors for different front-end frameworks like React and Vue. And this flexibility can be beneficial for developers working with different front-end technologies. I think it also provides a selector perker in Visual Studio Code, which can help developers easily select elements on a page without having to manually inspect the DOM structure. It also supports multiple programming languages like JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Java, and C-Shop, which makes it a versatile choice for developers with different programming backgrounds. It supports headless mode for running tests, which can be useful for continuous integration environments. Multiple browsers support like Chromium, Firefox, and Safari, not as extensively as Selenium, however. So if you're looking for full, true support of browsers, Selenium might be a better option, but if you don't care, and you just want to deal out with Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, Playwright is a good choice. Also, what I think is a great feature is this mobile emulation. So Playwright supports mobile emulation, allowing you to test how your application behaves, not just on a web browser, but also how it's going to behave on mobile devices. And some cons is it's a smaller community. So Playwright is newer than Selenium and Cypress, so its community is smaller. This means fewer resources and solutions to common problems can be complex. I know some people have said some of the users find the Playwright API to be more complex compared to other tools, which could lead to a steeper learning curve. And currently, a lot of its features aren't as well documented as, as Cypress or Selenium, especially when it comes to CI/CD integration. Playwright syntax may be less intuitive for developers who are new to end-to-end -end testing, especially compared to Cypress, which has a more concise syntax. So which one should you use? Well, I always say there's not one right tool. There's only one right tool for you and your team. I always recommend you do a proof of concept. So I would take a look at all three, run them through a two-week proof of concept with your team, and then have you decide which one's right for your situation. As we mentioned, all three have their pros and cons, but everyone has their preferences and things that they focus in on that some of these tools might be stronger with. So it all depends on the context that you're dealing with within your organization. So check out all three. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.